Hi and welcome to part two of module two where we will be looking at equity in terms of evaluating the health system in Australia. You should now have a good understanding of the Australian public health system under Medicare from module one. We are going to start by looking at Medicare more critically in module two. So as you know, Medicare is Australia's health insurance system and it permits equity in allowing Australians access to health care. Your first task for this module is to answer these two questions. Question one is despite that Medicare provides equity in access to health services, describe how inequity still exists in access to health care. And two, have you been able to witness this inequity from your clinical placements thus far? Explain. Whilst you might be able to answer these two questions off the top of your head, you might still need to do some reading. Your best source for this task is pages four to seven from Duckett and Wilcox, in addition to the section on equity in chapter 12 of the same textbook. As with the tasks in module one, it helps if you work with your team to compare answers. I showed you this diagram in the introductory video for this module and here we're going to just briefly look at it again. Equity, quality, efficiency, effectiveness and acceptability are the means by which the health system can be evaluated. We're going to start now by exploring equity. There are many variables which affect equity to access in health care. And these potential barriers include things like the cost of access. This particularly relates to socioeconomic level of the individual person, their financial considerations, whether the patient is employed or unemployed. You should also, when thinking about cost of access, consider the costs involved with the purchasing of prescription medication. Co-payments might be made by the government under the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme or PBS, but this is not always the case. For example, there are certain antifungal ointments uh, or contraceptive medication that are not subject to subsidy by the government. The next variable is location. So think about a rural versus an urban dweller who would have a different level of access to health care. There are fewer doctors in rural versus urban areas and in some towns there's only one doctor and this is quite a problem when that doctor chooses to relocate or retire or even goes on holidays for that matter. And then finally there are racial barriers. So for example uh, in Indigenous health or the provision of health care to non-English speakers and so on. Here is task two for part two. What I'd like you to do is access the telehealth website to answer these key questions. These questions and the answers you come up with will help you to understand the issues related to access to healthcare. So firstly, what is telehealth? For which patient groups or group might this medium improve access to healthcare? And finally, describe at least one way in which access problems in rural areas can be addressed or managed but don't include telehealth in this description. Now that you've completed the telehealth task, here is task three. The cost of access to healthcare is quite different at, depending on the country. So the question is, in which country does being uninsured pose the largest barrier to access to healthcare? And what particular costs are Australians most likely to face? The journal article by Schoen and Doty, which is entitled Inequities in Access to Medical Care in Five Countries, will assist you with answering these questions. Please read the paper and then formulate your answers. What's next? Well, this brings us to the end of part two in module two. And now that we've considered equity, the next video will explore the theme of quality when evaluating the health system in Australia.